lesson. We have been talking about a topic that is so very real. Real. To our lives. Amen. For the past couple of weeks, we have been dealing with a topic called unbelief. Unbelief. Unbelief is an, let me put it this way. It's a fatal disease. It is a visitor that you don't like. Unbelief is so real. It is so common that we don't even recognize it. That's the problem with Christianity, with believers. God is so, you know, we as believers, we don't even recognize this is unbelief. And we live our life. The Bible says, as many as received him, he gave them the power to become children of God. Let's turn to Mark chapter 6. This is the text that we have been meditating on. Mark chapter 6 and verse 58, 56 rather. Mark 6, 56. Wherever he entered into villages, into cities, into the country, or they laid the sick in the marketplace and begged him that they might just touch. Tap your neighbor and say, just touch. Just touch. Hallelujah. Uh, See, so many challenges are in our lives. We are struggling with issues. We are struggling with drugs. We are struggling with thoughts. We are struggling all around. And somehow we are forced to believe that this is the way we live. This is how life is going to be. But something is different when Jesus steps in. Amen. I don't know. Every one of us sitting here, we have something going on. But the Bible here says when Jesus entered into the village. When Jesus entered into the family. When Jesus entered into the house. Something started to change. Hallelujah. What was the thing? The first thing that started to change was there was a hope that something is going to be different. Amen. Tap your neighbor and say, do you have hope this morning? Jesus entered, entered into a village. Jesus entered into your life. Jesus entered to my home. It was many years ago. But when he entered my life, something started to change. No more. The challenges I was facing was still a challenge. You know why? They bought people who were sick, begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment. Tap your neighbor and say, just touch him. Just touch him. Your life will change. Just touch him. Your life is going to be different. And then the scripture goes on to say, and as many as touched him, they were made well. Again, what surprises me was the phrase, as many as. He doesn't say all touched him. It bugs me. Jesus was standing there before them. The power of God was out there that can change their lives.
the one who came from heaven to rescue man was right there in their village, in their hometown, in their home, in their family, but not everybody touched him. Why? There are hundreds of people now in churches. But not everybody touch him. Yeah. They come and they go. Yes. My question that bugs me is why, 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 why? <laughs> go away. If you have a medical problem and there is a treatment available, why would you not go and take it? <laughs> The Bible calls unbelief. Yeah. And that is one of the things that the Lord has been dealing in my heart. Here the Bible says, as many as touched him. Today you can touch him. Amen. He is here right now. You can touch him today. You don't need to be born 2,000 years ago. He is the same Jesus walking the streets yeah. of Galilee as he is right now. Amen. Yes. Yes. Tap your neighbor and say, he is the same Jesus. He's the same Jesus. Now, I want to turn. Come on, I want you to come with me. Listen, the Lord has been chiseling my heart. From the time he started talking to me about unbelief, the first thought I had when the Lord started to say is, can I do mighty work here? That's the question he asked me. Yeah. Mm. And then he took me to the scripture in Mark chapter 6. He said he could do no mighty work there because of their unbelief. Tap yourself and say, wake up. See, they were having unbelief. And when the Lord spoke that to me, the first thought that came to me and said, Lord, unbelief in me? What a prideful statement. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, Lord, unbelief in me? The Holy Spirit said, yes. <coughs> the reason I want you to see is the unbelief is the reason where, why you have been powerless. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 11. I'm going to read a few scriptures here. Oh, Rabbi Shaboko Samandari, I want, I want to, I want to read this. I want you to come with me. This is going to be a little painful. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I was with the Lord. I was talking to Him, and and the Holy Spirit has been talking to me about unbelief. He anchored me here. I don't know how long I'm going to stay in this place until this unbelief, you know, the roots of this unbelief is removed. Amen. Guys, that is my prayer. You are sitting here. There are people listening through Facebook. There are people, we are putting it in YouTube and, 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 and people in India, people in Africa, people in Russia are watching it. Yeah. But let me tell you, there's something common and it plagues the Christian world all over the world is the word unbelief. And, and we are going to camp in it until the Holy Spirit deals in your heart and my heart. And we will become one of the people who will touch him. Oh, man, come on. That's my heart. See, you are struggling with something and you are asking the Lord, why Lord? Why does not happen? Let me tell you, it is unbelief. Are you there with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. 
And I'm going to read verse 3. I'm going to read verse 3. Matthew 11, 3. Did you take it? Matthew 11, 3. And said to him, Are you the coming one? Or do we look for another? <laughs> Guys, when the Lord started talking to me, I told him, Lord, I'm not going to preach on this. I am not going to talk. No, 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 no. People won't like it. Because it was painful. Now, who said this? This was John the Baptist, verse 2. Yep. When John had heard in prison about the works of Jesus, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one? Or do we look for another? Are you the coming one? Or do we look for another Jesus? <laughs> Guys, when I was reading this, the Spirit of the Lord started talking to me. Son, if you have unbelief, you start looking for another Jesus. Yeah, come on. Yes. Good word. What is the effect of unbelief? The Lord said, my son, the unbelief will shift everything you think about me. John the Baptist, the very man who said, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. John the Baptist, the one who when he was baptizing, Jesus came, he saw heavens open and a dow come up from heaven. This was the very John the Baptist who said, I am the voice in the wilderness. Yeah. Cry out, make way for him. <laughs> yes. This was the very John that, that said to his disciples, disciples, listen, listen, I have to decrease, but he has to increase. Yeah. Now this John now was in prison. Yeah. And from prison, he is asking a question to Jesus. Are you the one? Or should we look for another? <laughs> the Lord started to speak to me and he said, Son, when you have challenges in life, when you have pressures in life, when your prayers have not been answered, it starts to force you to look for another. We were we were in the in the in the fair and we were we were we were distributing tracts and we were talking to people about Jesus. It was a Beautiful time. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful time. We walked into the fair and, you know, I, I, I am not a very comfortable guy who's going to go to somebody on the street and, and start talking about Jesus. I have some reservations, you know what I mean? Yeah. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, I have it. So, so, you know, initially I was thinking to myself, well, should I go or should I not go? But the Lord said, you know, would you go and see what I can do? Mm -hmm. oh, see, on. many times we want to go to see what you can do. Yeah. Uh, I want to go to see what I can do. Wow. But God said, no, you go to see what he can do. Amen. Wow, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. And so what, what we did, we went there and, and, and we, were, we were starting to, you know, give out tracks. And, and, you know, Tim was out there. And he was in his element. And man, he was blowing. <laughs> you know, he was cool. Man, he was running. And I was looking at him and saying, why is he running there? I could see nobody. Except people who will say, get out of my face. That's all I saw. <laughs> you know, my daughter was singing. 
yeah. you know, in the fair. So that was one of the reasons why I was there, you know. <laughs> but then I was there, and she was singing, and, and she was singing a couple of songs she wrote, and and and, and suddenly, you know, it it was all songs to you know praise the name of Jesus as she was singing, you know. Yeah. Boom! The presence of the Lord fell. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> no, let me tell you, it's not what you can do. It's what he can do yeah. through you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Suddenly something changed in me. Hallelujah. I looked at a person, I started running to him. <laughs> and, and, and he was he was a security guy. Yeah. He was having his, his you know his belt and uniform and, and he was a stout guy. I'm running to him and I said, sir, 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 excuse me. And he looks around and looks at me. And I, I show him this this card and the and and, 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 and and the card had a picture in it and, and some words and he put took the card, he looked at me and he sneered at me. Right? He sneered at me and he said to me, Sir. If this is in English, I can read it. Only then I look at it, it was in Spanish. <laughs> we took a whole set of tracks, which was all in Spanish. <laughs> this guy was looking at me, then I'm looking at it. It said some words I could not read. I thought, oh, this is not English. <laughs> And he smiled at me and he said, if it was English, I can read. And I looked at him and said, yes, I understand. This is Spanish. But listen, the picture is not in a language. It is beyond a language. What do you see? Yeah, come on. That's good. <laughs> he stopped. He looked at me and he said, mm, I see a pathway to heaven. Amen. Come on. I see a pathway to hell. And I looked at him and said, which side are you on? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Side are you on? <laughs> A smile came on his face and he said, I am on the way to heaven, my friend. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I looked at him and I smiled. I said, Hallelujah. praise the Lord. Praise I'll the Lord. see you there. Yeah. Amen. Now listen, yeah. when I finished that, whoa, yeah. the power of God yeah. just flooded into my heart and I started to go from one person to another and I was starting to turn around and I saw these people with all these tattoos and all this all these no rings and earrings and, and every kind of ring everywhere and the Lord said go <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you it was not me it was what the Holy Spirit can do through me Amen. tap your neighbor and say do you know what he can do through you so we were we were we were doing this and then as we were doing this we met this lady her name was Carrie and Carrie was uh, walking on that place and she was having some form of a muscle disorder. I can see a neurological muscle disorder. She was, she was walking with such a difficulty with two crutches. And so immediately the Lord showed me, showed her to me and, and as I was walking to her, Barbara also uh, was walking to her. So we went and we started talking to her and then we found out that uh, she was a believer. She was in a church. She has been in a church for many years. And we talked to her about a Jesus who can heal. But she smiled and she said, I prayed a lot, but nothing has happened. Wow. At that time, the Lord started showing me, son, many times when you have challenges in life, you start asking the question, are you the one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or should I look for another? Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Many times our image of Jesus is shifted because of our experience. 
How many of you can say that? Because I have, I was there. Yeah. When I when I was praying and, and when I was and I was I was in Yakuma and we were praying for the sick in 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 the church and and on Friday night services and and we were seeing the the healing power of Jesus flood. But then one thing happened. One lady became sick and she had cancer. And so we started praying. And when we prayed for the cancer, she died. And when she died, we didn't know what to say. What, what, what happened? Well, why? You know, that experience, what it did, it affected who my Jesus was. Are you the one? Or? Mm, mm, mm. We start looking for Jesus number two. We start looking for an upgraded version of Jesus. And so then my prayer started slowing down. No longer I was so aggressive in praying for the sick and setting the captives free. I was now starting to slow down. Why? Why? Because I was looking for That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the Jesus of the Mormons. I'm not talking about the Jesus of the Islam. I'm not talking about the Jesus of another religion. I'm talking about the Jesus of the Bible that we have shifted. <clears throat> John came, sent two disciples to Jesus, and he said, are you the one? I'm hearing about your words, but something in me wants to ask this question. Are you the one? How many times we have changed the image of Jesus? How many times have we done that over our lives? Mm. Our experience starts to shift. Who Jesus is. The Bible calls that unbelief. You still believe in a Jesus. You still believe that Jesus came and died for you. But you no longer believe he heals today. You still believe Jesus forgave all your sin. And but 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 you have a problem forgiving others. Wow. one or should we look for another mm. you pray for somebody to be set free from drugs to set free from a lifestyle you pray again and again and again and nothing happened and then you still believe in Jesus but you no longer believe Jesus will set them free right away you, you think to yourself, no, 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 I need, oh, I, I want the church as well as some other program. I need, I need AA, I need the uh, Narcotic Anonymous, I need this, I need, we add to Jesus because we feel Jesus is not enough. Are you the one? Or should we look for another? Tap yourself and say, Stop looking for another Jesus. See, the picture of Jesus in our mind has been so tainted by our experience. Would you agree with me? Amen. When we started believing in Jesus, when we first came to Jesus, when he started opening your eyes and you started seeing what he did in the pages of the scripture, something turned up in your heart. Yes. You said to yourself, let me go to this Jesus. 
Let me go to this Jesus. Because I know this Jesus heals. I know this Jesus sets me free. I know this Jesus blesses me. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you the one? Or should we look for another? Wow. You know, I was talking to the Lord and you know, whenever I preach and whenever I share, I love to I love to share something uplifting, you know, so I can get say hallelujah. <laughs> but I knew today it's not gonna be that. Because today, it's going to be the Holy Spirit is coming with a scalpel. Yeah, good luck. Yes, Lord Jesus. He's coming to you and he's going to say, okay, can I do a little heart surgery for you, my dear, right. this morning? It's true. I know it is going to hurt a little bit, but will you let me? Will you trust me enough so I can uproot this unbelief of your heart? Many times we are like John the Baptist. We are sending people to Jesus and saying, Jesus, are you the one? Or should I look? Oh my God. We have so many Jesuses. Jesus of a Pentecostal church. Jesus of a Catholic church. Jesus of a Methodist church. Jesus of a Presbyterian church. Shut up. <laughs> Glory. That is one Jesus. He is the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. If you have something different from the Jesus of the Bible, it is another Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Tap your neighbor and say, are you following another Jesus? Are you the one? Or should we look for another? You know, everybody, everybody searching, searching for somebody. You know, I'm gonna get personal here in my life. It was now no, almost almost how many years, Shiva? I'm not sure. It was 99. Yeah, when uh, my mom passed away. Oh, 98. 98. 98, we just moved into, into this country. Moved into this country. And uh, one month into this, Sheba was actually pregnant with Michael at that time. And uh, one month, we were only here for a month in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, uh, and I get a call from India. My dad was on the other line of the phone, at the end of the phone, and he was crying. You know, in India, men don't cry. Men just don't cry. He was crying, and he 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 told me that your mom is mom is in the hospital, and I I, I, I asked him what's going on. He couldn't. He was choking, and he said she's in the ICU. They are telling that she won't make it. I want you to come. I just landed in America. I didn't have any money. <clears throat> I put all the savings I had and looked for a ticket and I went back to India. <clears throat> when I went by, by the time I went back, my mom was in the ICU and she was totally unresponsive. She was unresponsive, unresponsive, under, she could not, you know. <clears throat> I went there and I, I looked at her and I couldn't stand it. All the tubes, all the wires. All the medicine was running in, and she was totally unresponsive because she had met an accident almost a couple of months be before that, and there was a bleeding into her brain. She didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And this blood had gone in throughout the brain, and it was increasing the pressure of the brain, and the doctor came to me. I know the doctor who was treating her. He came to me, and he said, Sonny, we just can't do anything. This is a, this is a bleeding, bleeding throughout the brain. Whatever we do, we'll only prolong her. I didn't know what to do. Mm. I went back home and I started crying. I said, 
God, I know you here. Mm -hmm. I preach you here. Mm -hmm. I hear the Bible and I read you here. Mm -hmm. And I started asking God. And when I started to pray, like, you know, I started to fast and I started to pray. I started to ask God and then, then it was, I think it was the third day morning. My mom passed away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to say. Right. Have you ever been in situations like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Have you been in places where you, with all that you got, you ask God and nothing seemed to happen? Mm -hmm. Those kind of experiences starts to mess you up. Yep. Yeah. You know, many people somehow try to ignore that. No, it messed me up. Mm. I put mom in the grave. I came back to this country. It didn't stop me from believing in Jesus. Mm. I knew Jesus is my savior. Hallelujah. It didn't stop me from believing that Jesus died for me. I knew Jesus died for me. It didn't stop me from believing that I'm going to heaven. I knew I'm going to heaven. But it did stop me from believing that Jesus hears my prayers. Mm -hmm. Well, mm. are you the one or should I look for another? Mm. Mm -hmm. I started looking for another Jesus. Mm. My Jesus was good enough for the life to come, but was not powerful enough for the life here. Mm. Mm. <laughs> My Jesus, I could believe, is having a place in heaven for me, but right now he's going to let me rot. I started to shift my mind and, and, and no more, no more. My prayer was, God, if you want to heal, go ahead. <laughs> Are you the one or should I look for another? Are you the one who is able to set the captive free or should I look for another? Are you the one who is able to change the drug addict? Or, or should I look for another organization? Eh? Mm. I'm going to be very frank with you. Okay. I believe those, those tools will help you. But let me tell you, Jesus is enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you the one who can heal arthritis or should I look for another? <laughs> what kind of Jesus are you following today? Mm -hmm. Is he the very same Jesus that walked the streets of Jerusalem? <coughs> touching the blind eye, setting the captive free, forgiving the sinner. Is he the same Jesus that does it today? Tap your neighbor and say, He is the one. John asked the question, Are you the one? Now, turn with me to another portion of scripture, then I'm going to be trying to wrap this. <coughs> and Jesus said, I am the one. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go back. There are a couple of scriptures I want you to read. Now let's read Luke chapter 20, 24. Luke chapter 24. Verse 5. 
Luke chapter 24, verse 5. Can somebody read that for me? Then as they were afraid mm -hmm. and bowed their faces to the earth, mm. they said to them. They said to them, who are they? The angels said to them. Uh, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you seek the living among why were the well why were this lady seeking Jesus in the tomb? Yeah. Why? Any ideas? Didn't know belief. Mm. To embalm him. So they thought Jesus was still dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, you seek Jesus in the wrong place because you are following a dead Jesus. Come on. Are you the one, or should I look for another Jesus? They were searching for Jesus in the grave. You know why? Because in their mind, Jesus was still in the grave. But tap your neighbor and say, that is unbelief. My Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. 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 Why do you seek the living among the dead? John asked the question, are you the one? Or should we look for another <laughs> Jesus? You know, let me tell you, what is the remedy? What is the answer for this unbelief? How many times we have had this experience that shifts this Jesus and, and no longer now we believe that Jesus can do it anymore? You know, you know, uh, Martha, Martha was there and, and Mary was there and Lazarus was dead, died. Jesus goes to Martha and says, you know, if you believe, I am the, do you know I am the resurrection and the life? And you know what Martha answered and said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe. One day, yeah. he's going to rise up. And then he said, she said to him, if you were there before he died, he would be saved. But one day it's coming. See, many times we think Jesus is a God of tomorrow, not a God of today. Are you the one? See, when you're struggling with this question, is Jesus enough? When you're struggling with this question, is Jesus enough for my situation? Is Jesus having enough power to heal me? Is Jesus having enough power to set me free? If that struggle is going on, let me tell you what you have to do is you have to go to Jesus. <laughs> John was in the prison. He could not leave the prison. <coughs> Lord, John could not leave the prison. So what he said, he called two of his disciples and said, hey, I have a question. Go ask him this. Now when you are struggling with this, this, this challenge, let me tell you, come to Jesus. Amen. So they came to Jesus and they said to Jesus, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Verse 4, I love verse 4. I love verse 4. Jesus answered and said to them, hallelujah. Tap your neighbor and say, he answered me. He answered me. 
He answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to Tap your neighbor and say, if you are struggling, come to Jesus. And when you come to Jesus, he will display his love. He will display his power. He will display his grace for us. What we need to overcome unbelief is an encounter with the true Jesus. <laughs> the disciples were, the, the women were searching Jesus in the grave. Right? And when they went to the grave, they saw the grave was open. Wow. Think about it. We think, oh, if I go to Israel and see the open grave of Jesus, then I will believe. Listen, an open grave will not make you believe. <laughs> the women saw the grave open for the first time in their dark and dark history. <coughs> but that didn't make them believe. But they were still searching for Jesus in the tomb. And then two, two men came and they were wearing this, this, this shiny clothes. And who were they? Angels. angels. Two angels came and talked to the women. But let me tell you, even then they did not believe. See, this morning I'm going to say, your, a vision cannot make you believe. A geological, geological excavation, finding the Noah's Ark is not going to make you believe. What you need is an encounter with Jesus. You need to meet this Jesus. Are you there with me? So these women saw two people. In Luke chapter 24, verse 6, they said, He is not here, but is risen. Tap your neighbor and say, He's risen. But then he didn't, he didn't just say that. Then he said something. Remember. Tap your neighbor and say, remember. remember. How he spoke to you. Hallelujah. Yeah. How can you encounter Jesus? The word of God. Yeah. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. Verse 8. And they remembered his words. Hallelujah. Yeah. We do. Remember. Guys, I want to tell you something amazing. What is going to remove this unbelief? What is going to shift and give us back the very image of God is the word yeah. of God. Yeah. The angels started telling them, hey, 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 remember, remember, remember what he spoke to you. Why have you forgotten? Let me tell you today what Jesus has spoken to you. Yeah. Every word God is saying, remember it. They remembered his words. Are you the one? Mm. So my question this morning, as we are winding it down, is Jesus the one? Yes. 
Is Jesus enough? <clears throat> the Bible says, if you read in Matthew chapter 12, I have a few more scriptures, but I'm not going to dwell with it. But the Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 12, he says, the, the one greater than the temple is here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you, he's not just the one. He is the greater one. He is the coming one. He is a powerful one. He is the holy one. He is the resurrected one. His name is Jesus. He is all powerful. Let me tell you, his power is more than enough to overwhelm type 1 diabetes. His power is more than enough to set an addict free. Hallelujah. I agree. Yes, Jesus. You are enough, Lord. Tap your neighbor and say, He is the greater one. Hallelujah. Whatever challenge is coming your way, my friend, I want to tell you, He is enough. Amen. 